Hello. In the previous video, we went over the impulse, the Dirac delta function, as a function that is zero everywhere, but it has a finite area. When you integrate it, you get a number out. Emphasis always keep very present both the fact that primarily zeros, but with a finite area. Okay, so using that definition, let's determine a couple of results here as well as provide graphical interpretation. What is the result of multiplying a function f of t times the delta function? So, if this is time, and we have a function, an arbitrary function, f of t, if we multiply times the delta function, which remember it is zero. Sometimes students do remember the impulsive nature of the delta function, but seem to forget the zero, that is primarily zeros. So when you multiply the delta function, the Dirac delta with another function, it's zero times something, zero times something. So it's zeros primarily. It's at a point, it's a And so what is the result? The result here is that f of t at all these points times zero becomes zero. In red, I have my result of that multiplication. It is zero at all the points, except at t equals zero, where if you have an impulse multiplied times something, you still have an impulse. Only that now that impulse, which before the scaling factor was one times impulse, this is equivalent to F zero, that, that point, this is t equals zero, so f of zero times delta t. We'll do an example later. So that's, that's really the result here. Um, f of t delta t is equal to f of zero times delta t. It is still has an impulse. Okay. Now, what happens now if we integrate it? So this is what we have here, this other result, right? So what is the result of integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t, delta of t, vt? Now, we already saw the result of what we are trying to integrate, right? So this will be integral delta t times a function makes that function be zero everywhere. You still get the delta out, but the function f of t gets sampled at that point, in this case is at zero, dt. And so what is this equal to? Well, f of zero is a scalar. We can take out of the integral. And by the definition, the area under the impulse is one. And so this is equal to, remember this is equal to one by definition, f of t, f of zero. So this is an important result here, okay? The fact that the integral of f of t delta t from minus infinity to infinity, vt, is equal to f of zero. Defined, well-defined. The way we tame the delta function, the Dirac delta function, is by integrating it. So this is well defined, okay? Yes, because the area, if we integrate it, under the delta is equal to one. OK? 
Okay. Now let's do this other example here. So just let's, and I'm going to do another one. I'm going to stand the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t delta of t minus t zero. We're going to do four. So the third one, if we were to integrate from minus infinity to infinity, f of t minus t zero, meaning we shifted that the function delta t dt. What is this equal to? Well. We just shifted the function, right? And so this is still what we are going to do in this case is, is use the previous result. Notice that the delta function is still at zero, same graph that we had before. The function now was shifted and so we are just picking another point out. And so this is equal to integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of zero minus t zero delta t vt, which does just a point, right? This is a scalar, we can bring it out. f of minus t zero, in this case, integral from minus infinity to infinity delta t dt, which that is equal to 1, so this is just equal to f of minus t0, is that particular point that you did the shift. Let's do this other one, however, that that's very interesting. What happens if you shift the impulse? This is the situation here. Our impulse gets shifted somewhere else, like maybe here. This is our t0. In that case, the integral of minus infinity to infinity of f of t delta t minus t zero vt is equal to the integral minus infinity to infinity. Notice this is going to be f of when we shift the impulse function. The point at which the impulse occurs now is at t0. It is 0 everywhere else except at that point. And so this is like sampling f of t at t0. Delta t minus t0 dt, which is equal to f of t0 integral infinity to infinity, delta t minus t0 dt. Now, what is this integral equal to? It's the same, it doesn't matter that the core is zero or at some other point. It is still equal to one as long as the limits of integration include the impulse. From minus infinity to infinity, yes, it's going to include it. So this is equal to f of t zero. Okay. So this is an important result. Which we will use in the derivation of certain Fourier transforms. So once again, you pick a function, you multiply it times the impulse, and the result is still a, a, an impulse that is largely undefined. But if you integrate it, what you get out is that function evaluated at a point. In the case that the impulse occurs at zero, like in this case, or here, then you get the function evaluated at f of, f of zero. If you shift the impulse, like in this case, the impulse happens here at t equals zero, you get that function, this function, evaluated exactly at that point, f of t zero, as the output. Important result. Finally, as we mentioned before, if you just multiply a function times the impulse and you do not integrate it, you have an impulse out. You just change the, the area, if you will. So the area of the impulse is one, but now you technically you are multiplying it times the function at that point. So you put it inside the integral, you are there. It's also important, something that we use here, 
that integral being equal to 1, this is the definition of the impulse. Remember, the impulse from minus 1, minus infinity to infinity, delta t, dt, is equal to 1. Well, the impulse minus infinity of infinity, delta t, minus t0, dt, is equal to 1. In general, as long as the integral, the limits of integration, picks the impulse, you have that situation. The integral of t0 minus epsilon, t0 plus epsilon, so we just pick this t0 of delta t minus t0 is equal to 1, dt is equal to 1. That's, if we integrate it though over a range where we did not pick the inputs, like from here to here, then it will be 0. We'll see some examples in just a moment in the next video. Thank you.